here we go on a Wednesday. This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we're on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. One hour from now, Greg Cosell live in studio. Uh, wherever I go, people always say, more Greg Cosell, more Greg Cosell. So we're going to have him on today for a couple segments. Going to have him on tomorrow for a couple of segments. He comes and stops by once or twice a year, generally right before the season as we get into August. So one hour from now, Greg Cosell stops by for about 15 or 20 minutes. And Joy Taylor is joining me. She's got that August sunshine look. <laughs> I got the lavender. She's got the yellow. We're celebrating summer. We are celebrating summer. And summer means camps are opening and camps are underway. Let me start the show with this today. This is what I don't get about fans. Why do you want players to make a lot of money? What you should want is flexibility. You should actually be on the side of the owner because players come and go. What you want as a fan is your team to be financially nimble. They don't get trapped in a bad contract. Washington Wizards, John Wall. What you want from your team, because you grew up in the city, right? You grew up in Milwaukee. You grew up in Dallas. You grew up in Chicago. You grew up in Atlanta. You grew up in Tampa. The player... It'd be nice if he gets paid, but you don't want your team to get trapped. That's when you become a bad team. New England never gets trapped. You know what I mean? They don't get tra San Antonio Spurs rarely get trapped. So I never understood fans who were like, yeah, my guy got paid. What do you care? He's not going to hang out with you. He's not going to party with you. He's not going to spend it on you so he can afford another yacht. But it's a prime example. Michael Thomas just made a $100 million extension five years. He's worth every penny. But this is why the NFL's got it right and the NBA doesn't. So, first of all, Michael Thomas is very productive. Secondly, they've paid him almost nothing for three years. Uh, third, now you only have to guarantee 60 of the 100 million, meaning if he goes sideways, you can, you can bail on it. And D, he's almost guaranteed to continue to be productive because of Drew Brees and Sean Payton and that offensive concept. It's great for him. He gets generational wealth. But it's great for the team and the fan because, listen, the Saints want to win now and they're paying him now money for the next three years. It's guaranteed. So his family's well off, but the team's in a good spot. If the last two years, if he gets hurt, team can move on. He's still generationally wealthy. The team got every bit of production out of him. Yes, it's a lot of money to pay a wide receiver. But I've always said, I'll pay a quarterback, I'll pay a left tackle, I'll pay a defensive lineman, and in, and in some cases, I'll pay big for a wide receiver. He's a guy I'd pay for. Drew Brees is getting older, I'd pay for him. But the reason this contract works is because there's so much talent in American football, he was a second-round 47th pick, that you can't, if you paid nothing for a house and the value just kept going up first three years of mortgage, you don't mind overpaying on the mortgage four, five, and six in year seven because you paid nothing for it the first three years. Take, take Dak Prescott, for example. So Dak Prescott has cost you nothing. He's been absurdly productive. I mean, Dak Prescott in four years has made $2.7 million. He's, his guaranteed money has been under $400,000. I don't mind if you pay him $150 million over the next five years because it comes out to $15 million. So it changes Dak Prescott and his family's life. He, he's worth every penny. It helps the player's life. That's a great story. It makes me feel good. But I don't know Dak. I'm not going to party with that. He doesn't live in my neighborhood, right? Doesn't matter. not going to be throwing street parties. I'm not going to benefit from it. But it also allows the Cowboys to feel like they win it too. They got a ton of production and didn't have to pay him anything. I never understand NBA fans who are like, yeah, my guy, John Wall. You're done. Your franchise is dead in Washington. It's over. You're trapped. The NFL doesn't get trapped. Yes, Michael Thomas now has generational wealth. I'm happy for him. But the Saints can move out of it in three or four years if he gets hurt or gets or goes sideways. They don't play. They don't want to work as hard. Gets hurt. He still gets $60 million guaranteed minimum. And the Saints can move on and say, now we got to pay this new quarterback that replaced Drew Brees. This is the NFL's secret sauce. A hard cap. Everybody wins. The player wins. The fans win. The owner wins. The coach wins. The, the star player's family wins. I, I've never understood this. 
in the NBA, you only get about five new players a year that can really play at a top level. So stars have ultimate leverage. Middle middling players get paid a fortune. And, you know, it, 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 and the fans are always like cheering for the big contract. Why? It's not spending it on you. You want your team to be nimble enough that they can pay star players when they're great, but when they erode, they get hurt. They don't work as hard. Just like a company. Just like a company. If I ran a company, I would pay my best people a lot of money. But I, if they did go four or five years into it sideways, I wouldn't be... <laughs> I like baseball. I wouldn't be, want to be locked into Joey Votto in your seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't afford any pitching. This is where this is where baseball and the NBA are a mess. You're paying a lot of times for hope, crossing your fingers. Uh, you don't have leverage. There's not enough players coming into your sport. The NFL has got it figured out. Everybody wins. The Saints win. Michael Thomas and his family win. Uh, Mickey Loomis wins. Gail Benson wins. The fans in New Orleans win because they want to win now, and he's a great player, so let's pay him now. Front load it. $60 million guaranteed. Changes his family's history, but it doesn't negatively change the fans' potential history. That's why, why I think the NFL's number one. You don't get trapped. It's a good contract, and I would have paid every penny of it. All right, so um, speaking of paying, there's this you know consternation about, oh, we got to pay Dak, we got to pay Dak, we got to pay Dak. So the Dallas Morning News, a great American newspaper, went back and they looked at all the great Cowboy quarterbacks at 26 years old. Don Meredith, Roger Staubach, Danny White, Troy Aikman, Tony Romo, and Dak Prescott. Well, what do you know? Dak is way better than all of them. <laughs> not even close. Roger Staubach and Tony Romo had Tony Romo had not attempted an NFL pass at 26, either at Roger Staubach because of his military service. Don Meredith and Troy Aikman weren't very good in the passes they had thrown. And here is Dak. Hmm. And this is the funny thing about Dak. Dak's had to deal with nothing but crap. In 2016, he comes in. Tony Romo gets hurt and then calls an impromptu press conference, which catches the whole state off guard. And Dak's like, oh, I love Tony. I guess I'm starting. The following year, he has to deal with Zeke's six-game suspension. The suspension hovered over training camp. Tyron Smith, the left, best left tackle in football, gets hurt. And then last year, he loses Dez, he loses Jason Witten, he loses the best center in football, Travis Frederick, and there's an anthem controversy he has to put his arms around. And the entire time, win the division. He also has to deal with a public owner. He has to deal with a coach who's on a perpetual hot seat. Pay the man. For seven years, all you fans have done in Charlotte is make excuses for Cam Newton. He's had above-average offensive lines, above-average running games, an above-average head coach, above-average defenses. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Dak Prescott has had to deal with controversies, suspensions, uh, an absurdly public. There's not even a second owner in the league that's close to Jerry in terms of setting fires as an owner. Controversies, suspensions. The anthem thing. Jerry talking. Coach on the hot seat. Jason Witten retires. Wins every single year. Second winning his record to Tom Brady since he came in the league. Little perspective. Dallas Morning News says, let's look at all these great Cowboy quarterbacks at 26. How were they? Dak is significantly better than all of them. He doesn't have the best arm. He's not the most mobile, but leadership, good enough mobility. And oh, by the way, oh, by the way, at the end of last year, I just, I just wanted, just want to make sure all you Cowboy fans out there and all you NFL hate Dak guys, remember, anybody know what Dak did in his final eight games last year? Like a lot of young players, he got better. Seven and one, 68% completion percentage, passer rating over 100. He's also getting better. Here's Dak Prescott, last eight weeks of the NFL season. Young people in all sports tend to get better. If you look at his last eight weeks, seven and one. Completion percentage, passer rating, yards per game, up, 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 up against four playoff teams. 
<sighs> All right, coming up, Saints fans are trying to get in my face this morning. It's not going to work. That is not going to work. I am feeling good about the show and good about myself, Saints fans. Uh, I think you're going to, uh, and by the way, I've been right on this three straight years. I think you're going into the tank this year. And uh, I'll double down on that for those Saints fans who are of the delusion that Michael Thomas's signing changes everything. It changes absolutely nothing. Summer is here. It's barbecue season. My wife just left a town this morning. So that means tonight I'm on my own. And if you're on your own and a guy, I'm not doing some souffle here. It's not uh, fondue time. I got to get to the grill. The grill's easy. That's where Butcher Box comes in. Butcher Box chicken, organic, free range chicken, uh, uh, grass-fed beef, uh, wild-caught sockeye salmon from Bristol, Bristol Bay, Alaska. Butcher Box, best farms, no hormones ever, no antibiotics ever. Humanely raised, ethical. They deliver it free shipping to your door which comes out to less than six bucks a meal for the best protein on the planet. Just join ButcherBox.com slash herd. 20 bucks off the first box. 